So, what are we doing? Surprise me. Perfect. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Hellraiser parodies. Tell us, what delights have you in store for us? Oh, you'll love this. For this list, we're looking at the funniest and most notable send-ups of Pinhead and the gang in various movies and TV shows. Were there any we missed? Tear our souls apart in the comments. Number 10. Craniac, Corpsicle, and Gristle. Extreme Ghostbusters. New flesh. Be with us. Be one of us. One would be forgiven for forgetting this single season animated series even exists, but it certainly did not forget Hellraiser when searching for inspiration. Flesh. To our specimen, a suit of skin. To us, sculpting clay. A blank canvas promising infinite aesthetic possibility. Rather than Hellraiser creator Clive Barker, this episode features the creations of J.N. Klein, a play on Goosebumps author R.L. Stein. When Klein's writing enhances the abilities of interdimensional entities, it's up to the extreme Ghostbusters to save the day. If it is not written, it, it cannot, cannot be done. done. Though the designs are not nearly as grotesque, it's clear these pseudo Cenobites took a direct page out of Barker stories and were made palatable for younger audiences. However, we have a feeling they induced more than a few nightmares anyway. The book will be finished. The book will be done. And together, we will change the face of humanity. Number 9. Various The Simpsons. We're gonna get into a few adult skewing cartoons, so where better to start than with The Simpsons? Pinhead's first appearance comes in the episode Stop or My Dog Will Shoot, wherein Bart has a fantasy of a RoboCop-esque Santa's little helper fighting crime. And by crime, we mean Pinhead, Jason Voorhees, and a textbook. Good boy! Now, transform! <laughs> It's brief, but a crossover we definitely would want to see in real life. Next, in the episode The Ways We Were, Mo is fearful of being alone. So what better way to visualize this fear than with a singing melange of villains? No one likes you, you're the worst. We'd all be happy if your head just burst. Alongside a pinhead Mo is one of the Joker, Phantom of the Opera, and even the Devil. Come to think of it, can we get this for real too? Number 8. Needlehead, Stan Helsing. Coming out in the era of a swath of subpar parody movies, 2009's Stan Helsing is not much different. But if you ever wanted to see a Suicide Squad of 80s slasher villains, it's definitely got you covered. Nice costume, you're like the third one tonight. Can I help you? I'm looking for a Mr. Helsing. Joining the likes of Leatherface and Michael Myers, or should we say Pleatherface and Michael Cryers, Needlehead is definitely a more corny version of our favorite Cenobite, as instead of pins, his head is adorned with things like throwing darts and syringes. Prepare yourselves to die, mortal! <laughs> He's honestly not much of a threat. In fact, none of the killers are. But we do get some good group karaoke out of it. Or should we say scary -oke? Okay, we'll leave now. We're here to kill STAM. It's fun to kill STAM. Our intentions are real, and you can't make a deal. But K will save you your last meal. Number 7 Sheriff Stone's Puzzle Box. Scooby Doo, Mystery Incorporated. Listen here, Miss Fancy Nancy Goody Pants. I can do anything I want because I'm Sheriff Bronson Stone. And this is all my stuff. Even this stupid puzzle box, which doesn't seem to have any use whatsoever. Boring. Mystery Inc. has handled numerous baddies dressed up in spooky costumes, but they should thank their lucky stars that they narrowly missed having to deal with a much deadlier threat. We have such sights to show you. In the episode The Hodag of Horror, the recurring character of Sheriff Bronson Stone seems to not understand the difference between evidence and personal belongings. He takes out a puzzle box from a previous case, and as expected, it mysteriously solves itself and summons a far greater threat. Oh, such sights. Where'd 
Frodo. It's a pretty random reference, but a much appreciated one for older audiences. Interestingly, it's not the first time Scooby-Doo referenced Hellraiser. As it's been said, the Damon Ritus from the first live-action film also drew inspiration from the puzzle box. Through the Damon Ritus, I shall absorb the energy source. Number 6. Toaster Face, The Venture Brothers Obviously, the clear move to make when parodying Pinhead is just to swap out the first syllable of his name. Tinhead, Chinhead, Violinhead, but Toaster Face is definitely something even we wouldn't have thought of. All ye of magical disciplines, the curtain to the netherworld is threadbare. The veil need not be lifted. On this night, we need only to peer through it. In this Venture Brothers Halloween special, Dr. Orpheus hosts the Brimstone Assembly. At his gathering, the Outrider and Tatiana perform a magic trick that gets a little too kinky for some of the guests' tastes. Submit to desire. I offer you ultimate pleasure. While a suspended Outrider tries to solve a Rubik's Cube, a Cenobite named Toasterface waxes poetic about the pleasures of, well, toast. Submit to my toast. My pleasure toast. You hunger for it. Wait! I've got it. Look! All sides! Super. Well, ta-da! It's a weird parody, to be sure, but one that is definitely on brand for the Venture Brothers. Anybody else weirdly craving toast? Number 5. Low Stakes Hellraiser – Family Guy Family Guy is no stranger to parodying everything from people to fictional characters to horror movie villains. Heck, it even has Jason Voorhees as a long-standing resident of Quahog. Well, I think you're doing a great job, Mrs. Griffin, but my boss would kill me. How's everything going out here? Fine, Mr. Voorhees. Good, because if you screw up, I'll kill you. Still, we think our good pal Pinhead could use some more representation on the show, as his sole cutaway comes in the season 5 finale, Meet the Quagmires. But what a cutaway it is. Could you let me go back in time and be 18 again? What are you, high? No! Coming up next on ESPN, Women's Professional... All right, you win. Let's go but just for one night. The episode features Peter being sent back to his 18-year-old body in 1984, where he promptly back to the future's things up. Beforehand, an interaction with Cleveland has him feeling excited to raise some hell. You can see where he's going with this. We are gonna raise more hell than Hellraiser! Hey, honey, you want some salt for your steak? Yeah, sure. Ah, <laughs> gotcha! That's more salt than you wanted. Ruining a perfectly good steak definitely sounds like hell to us. Number 4. Pinface – The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy Again, we're not too sure kids understood the reference here, but it's one adult viewers can definitely get behind. About six years before the Venture Brothers special, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy also had the idea to summon Pinhead out of a Rubik's Cube. Or should we say, Pin Face? They call me Pin Face. Why did they call you that? Look closely. Don't you notice these grotesque bowling pins sticking out of my head? Look at me! Look! Rather than a series of nails, the pins here describe those of the bowling variety. And it works marvelously well for the Cartoon Network show. And then once I hung out at the Underworld Mall with his sister. And she still doesn't understand why you so viciously dumped her. Because she had bowling pins sticking out of her head, man! The interplay between Pinface and Billy, not to mention his old acquaintance Grimm, never ceases to bring a smile to our face. But the piece de résistance has to be when Pinface's friends are more concerned with partying than their usual pleasures. You know what sounds like a great idea? Please don't say a house party. A house party? Hey everyone, come on in! The party's in here! Number 3. Fornicus, The Cabin in the Woods Full name Fornicus, Lord of Bondage and Pain. This pinhead send-up is just one of the many monsters our band of college kids could have summoned in the titular cabin. Guys? Guys, listen to this. Though Kurt doesn't activate the puzzle orb, we see Fornicus in all his glory when Dana and Marty descend into the facility in the glass elevator. Rather than needles, toasters, or bowling pins, though, Fornicus has circular saw blades going through his head. In the cellar? Oh, that shit we were playing with. They made us choose. They made us choose how we die. 
Thankfully, Fornicus does get time to play with the rest of the monsters during the Code Black, scene about to torture an unlucky soul. We'd love to see an alternate version of this movie where Fornicus gets picked. Or maybe even a Cabin in the Woods TV series. Hey Lionsgate, you listening? <laughs> Number 2. Various – Robot Chicken It says whoever reaches the kitten first will win the golden power of Vito. With the ability to show numerous short sketches and its long lifespan, you had better believe Robot Chicken has spoofed Hellraiser once or twice during its 15-plus year history. In fact, the series has been referenced or outright depicted a whopping seven times as of this publication. The most popular of these sketches also pokes fun at the Big Brother franchise, where Pinhead rooms with other slasher icons like Freddy Krueger and Ghostface. America made the right choice giving the call to Ghostface. Of course, I would have called my mom. Today's her birthday. I love you, mom. Speaking of which, it seems the Robot Chicken writer's room suspects Pinhead is something of a mama's boy, as also evidenced by this sketch. What, mom? Gosh! Honey, I need your help with the sewing pattern. I'm out of pants. Uh, pan, oh, uh, right, pan, that's enough. A safety pan. How'd you, you got, get in you got there? Enough. Oh, yeah. And if you needed another inappropriate IP crossover, there's also the Cenobites infiltrating Girls Gone Wild. Cenobites have used up every cheap thrill on hell and earth, but they've never done anything like this. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Hell Demons – Rick and Morty Can I do the Hell Cube this time? Sure, pal. How do you know when it's aligned? Come on, Jerry, just it's an evil cube. Just shake it until it draws blood. With all due respect to these other parodies, no one nails Hellraiser quite like Rick and Morty. Much like the Cenobites see pain as pleasure, the ones depicted in the episode A Morty Can Graffiti see anything bad as good. As such, they love hanging out with Jerry and reveling in his delicious brand of cringe. Wait, honey, how's that Tina Turner song you love go again? What's love, Dr. Do, Dr. Do Little? <laughs> <laughs> he thinks those are the lyrics. When Jerry gets wise to the irony of the situation, his bummer attitude forces the demons to create their own kind of fun. Then thrill me by keeping me out, coat hanger face. Wow, it's coat rack head. But like, if we offend you, isn't that good? Big time? Yeah, duh. I loved it. So painful, and therefore so pleasurable. The Adams Family esque levels of oppositeness prove endlessly entertaining, as the demons are constantly contradicting themselves and their situations. When it comes right down to it, this episode is good, and that doesn't make it bad. Hey, a dad just liked all his daughter's friends' photos on Instagram. Ooh. Oh. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.